That's a perfect idea. So we have this purple, beautiful white and cake on the inside. That's purple, pink, and blue. So it's a three-tier cake. And we're in this room with this cake. Now our mother has told us, don't eat this cake yet. It's not time. Don't eat the cake. And then your mother leaves the room. How many of you would eat that cake? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> So we have a couple of people who would eat the cake. <laughs> well, we know that in Ephesians, it tells us to obey our parents. So, if we have gone and snuck a bite of that cake when our mother has told us not to, it would have been a sin. But that cake looks so good, right? Sometimes sin, even though it's bad, can look really good. Now, how many of you have heard of my story? <laughs> There's a part in my story when I've made it back to the castle on my 16th birthday, and this beautiful green orb appears. It's like a glowing ball of green light. Do you remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't remember that. Well, that's all right. It's this beautiful ball of green light. It almost puts me into a trance, and I follow it away from where I'm supposed to be. And that ball of green light that I follow is a lot like temptation. Do you know what temptation is? Yeah. Yeah. Temptation is when we feel the desire to do something we know we shouldn't do. Now this green orb leads me to, it leads me to this spoon wheel, that's right. Remember, she, I was cursed that when I touched the spindle of a spoon wheel, I would die, remember? Now, luckily, the good, right, luckily, Meriwether was able to change it so that I just go into deep sleep. But this orb leads me to the spinning wheel, and I touch the spindle. Touching that spindle is when we follow through with that sin. We do the one thing we know we're not supposed to do, right? We know we're not supposed to do that. Well, in that, not then I didn't. <laughs> now, let's say that we disobeyed our mom and we took a bite of that delicious looking cake. Did you know that as soon as we realize that we mess up, we can ask God for forgiveness? Isn't that wonderful? In Romans, it says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Do you know what happened when Christ died for us? He did. He cleansed away our sins. Not only the sins that you've already done, but the sins that you're going to do. That means he didn't just like cover them. He cleansed them, which means you are now made white and whiter than snow. Do you know how white snow is? Yeah, but it's not really white when it gets snow. Right, but that fresh, pure snow is so white. And Jesus made us whiter than snow when he died for us on the cross. Like that white. <laughs> so when we ask God for forgiveness, 1 John tells us that he is faithful to forgive. No matter what you've done, he will always forgive you. He is faithful to forgive. So you don't have to be afraid to come to him because he is always there and he never leaves you and he will always forgive you because he loves you. Okay, now let's say that we didn't take a bite of that cake, but we really, really want to. It looks so good. That feeling, even though we know we're not supposed to eat the cake, but that feeling, that desire of wanting to eat the cake, that's called temptation. Remember that? Now, how do we know how to resist temptation, how to not follow through with the temptation? Does anyone know how, how we do that? It's to think in your head. What are we going to think in our head? It's this? not to eat the cake when your mom says not to. And don't follow the green glowing light. Right? <laughs> don't follow the temptation. That's right. So the Bible tells us that in order to resist temptation, it says to submit to God. Do you know what to submit means? Well, yes, but to submit to somebody is to tell them that you, 
I am, um, <laughs> it's letting them be the one that's in charge of your life. You're going to say yes to that person that you've submitted to. So if you submit to God, you say yes to God, then that's your way of submitting to him. So it says, submit to God, resist the devil. Do you know what to resist means? Not to follow him. Yeah, don't follow him. Don't do what he tells you to do. As soon as you feel that temptation come on you, resist the devil, submit to God. And when we do that, do you know what the devil does? He gets you in big trouble. If you follow through, you might get in trouble. But if you submit to God and resist the devil, the Bible says that he'll flee from you. Do you know what it means to flee? The Bible is like, it means to run away. That's right. You know, the Bible is like your shield. That's and the, right. And the word of God is like your Yes, you are exactly right. <laughs> and did you know that Satan is basically a big old dragon. He looks like a big dragon, but in reality, he's just a tiny little mouse. And he's already been defeated because he was defeated when Jesus died on the cross. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? So that means because he's already, defe already defeated, we have the authority to say no to him, to resist him, to submit to God, and do the thing we know we're not supposed to do. So next time we're in a room alone with a beautiful three-tier cake that's pink, blue, and purple, and our mom says, don't forget yet, we know that we can obey our mom, we can submit to God, and not eat the cake until we know we're allowed. <laughs> so how would you like if we all said a prayer together? Would that be all right? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, can you hold your hands and close your eyes, bow your heads, and you can pray in your hearts with me as I pray out loud. Dear God, thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've created. Thank you so much for this time that we have together to come and share your word. And thank you so much for your faithfulness to forgive. And we just ask right now, if there's anything going on in our life that we know that we've done wrong, we just ask for forgiveness for it right now. We know that you are faithful to forgive and that we are washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.